Welcome back in. Artificial intelligence, AI, it's everywhere these days, oftentimes helping make things easier. It's also something that's being considered in the agriculture industry, but there's still a lot of challenges out there. This afternoon, we have Dan Vigella with us to take more of a deeper dive. Dan, uh, it, it, it's interesting. When I saw the uh, possibility to talk to you, I thought, oh, we're all curious about AI, but then you take a step further because agriculture is so important to our lives about feeding our world. Uh, how did you get involved with AI in the first place? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll give you the fast version. I actually went to graduate school at UPenn for um, cognitive science, and, and my focus was kind of skill acquisition, which crosses into the world of adult learning. And while I was there, uh, there were some people in the Wharton School who were tapping me on the shoulder that, hey, you should check out this machine learning stuff. And this is about 14 years ago, just for context for you. Um, and uh, by the time I graduated, I realized, man, that just seeing a little bit of this, this is a really big deal. So I um, started interviewing a lot of leaders and uh, startups and companies, sold a few firms in the meantime, and um, have for the last five or six years been full-time growing a market research firm. So kind of saw the early promise of computer vision and decided I got to find a way to be involved, and I just found a way. Well, you're at a pretty high level because you've spoken to the United Nations and to Interpol before. What was that about? Yeah. So. Uh, I've been involved in the intergovernmental world for about the last six years. So Interpol is obviously focused on the future of policing. So we could talk about predictive policing or the use of security cameras and things like that. The United Nations has many interests in AI. The UN is a pretty broad organization with many uh, constituent parts. But one of my more recent presentations and, and kind of UN headquarters in New York was around uh, deep fakes and kind of the possibility of AI generated content even beyond just uh, people and what, what that impact might be for sort of society, governance, et cetera. So, so there's so right. much potential for AI in agriculture. Uh, some people might be surprised at like, uh, gee, uh, farmers aren't going to be really wanting to use this, th this stuff at all. But that's quite contrary because the farmers I know, uh, you, you, people may be shocked to find out they uh, use GPS for their uh, the planting and their, they kept the crops. They, I've seen them use GPS for the fertilizer. Uh, they have uh, they do core samples or soil samples in in their fields to know exactly what nutrients are needed where. And I can see the potential in, in deciding when to plant, where to plant plant, what to plant, things like that. Absolutely. I mean, if, if you'd like to go into use cases, we can. What I will say, just as context for your agriculture audience, you know, when we look at where the big dollars and big adoption of artificial intelligence is going, it's very much in sort of other more digitally native industries like, you know, banking or life sciences. But to your point, there is now enough out of the box available and accessible AI powered tech in agriculture where it is increasingly popular, especially among the, the larger folks in this space. And so you can take this wherever you want to, but um, we can go into use cases if you'd like or wherever you want to head off here. Well, also the thing is, uh, you know, farmers, a, a lot in this country, uh, feed a lot of the world uh, it's 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 americans Ooh, but also absolutely. around the world and so this is a agriculture is so important to our our living that yeah, anything yeah. to enhance that and make it more efficient is a good thing uh, I, look i couldn't agree more i mean you know we we like following what's happening in healthcare with ai because we've all got somebody who we hope their disease gets cured or they live a little longer or whatever and i think you know agriculture is clearly one of those places where you know, we can't have civilization without it. And there are civilizations outside of this country, to your point, that rely on ours. So any way that we can get an edge does matter. And even if agriculture is investing the majority of the AI funds, they are starting to move and shake and they are starting to see some advantage in this stuff. And I think that's a good thing. Dan, what are you seeing? What do you vision for AI doing with agriculture, what, uh, for, yeah. with the, just the regular farmer? I'll give you the current state. So currently, some of this tech is is more prevalent up market than it is down market you know if, if you're pretty limited in terms of acreage you know there's a shot you're not going to be using this stuff tomorrow but but some of it increasingly is becoming more accessible so you might so what i'd like to do is talk about some of the in use today technology that's somewhat you know accessible and viable and then maybe talk about some of the little bit more advanced stuff um, and then maybe a little bit about where things are going. So I'll start small, see if you want to ask any more details, and we can kind of get progressive, uh, progressively into it. Um, sort of highest level stuff here in terms of uh, greatest level accessibility that we see, and the space is moving quickly, and there's a number of things. Um, but 
computer vision from an aerial perspective is is a, a pretty big deal at this point in agriculture and safely is sort of part of the future of that domain. So this could be satellite imagery or it could be drone imagery. But when we're looking at, at that kind of imagery, we're looking at the relative state of relative crops. So this this could be informing us as to where we need to be directing our water. This could be informing us as to where we might need to be using more pesticides or less pesticides. This might be informing us how we want to treat our crops, but being able to leverage computer vision to get a sense of what's up with the soil, what's up with the plant uh, at some degree of scale. And even on a regular basis, if we're talking about a satellite or a drone that we can just chuck up in the air, that's relatively accessible. It doesn't involve a tremendous amount of like data science complexity. It's just about using the dashboard, understanding the images. It's a little bit more accessible. It's um, a it's a high risk, high reward type profession. Uh, thing is, yeah. all that preparation you go into, and like if you get a drought that year or you get your crops washed out, AI can't help you with the weather. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when we have AI that can control the weather, I think you and I might have bigger problems <laughs> getting food. We'll have, we'll have some kind of a crazy deity you know, in the computer at that point. But yes, certainly there's some things AI just can't control, but being able to kind of gauge where we are and help to inform and prompt action from a computer vision standpoint, that's been, you know, the better part of a decade that stuff has been developing and getting more and more accessible, let's say, where, you know, someone with a relatively uh, immature sort of, you know, drone setup could be able to garner some reasonable value there. There are other things that are a little bit more prevalent when we go more upmarket. So there, there are some autonomous, um, you know, uh, vehicles and kind of movement that can happen with artificial intelligence. This This could be something that's planting or weeding or watering or what have you. Not all systems that do that autonomously require AI at all, but there are some where it is warranted. There's some interesting use cases around weeds um, with machines that'll shoot lasers or, or other sorts of things to get rid of specific weeds, but keep other specific plants so we can reduce our human time. Um, so there's some of that sort of autonomous moving and kind of weeding activity. And then to your point, um, understanding the state of our soil kind of from a chemical level and, and using that as, as something that we can inform sort of how we want to treat our plants is, is part of the mix. Um, and uh, there is some work, and I think it's exciting, there's a lot of work in the R&D world of life sciences uh, and developing drugs, but as it turns out, some of those processes have great correlates to the development of chemicals in ag. So your farmer is not going to use that, but the material, the chemicals that they use maybe two, three years from now, it would not be unusual if those were in, in part helped to be conjured by AI systems that could find things with the right effects that don't have the right downsides, uh, et cetera. And so I would say that's a little bit of a stack of what we're seeing in the near term. Dan, we are out of time now, sorry to say, but I uh, really okay. enjoy the talk. Our world is changing at such a rapid pace. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you, Dan. We'll be right back.